Hi. Uh, thanks for staying so late. It's, uh, it's almost social dinner time. So I'm presenting a very brief, uh, very brief in the use case and applications category. So not too big, not too small. Open source geospatial units that are just right. So I'm here with my colleague uh, Elise and Erin as well. Um, and this is a project um, where basically our aim is to build granular, uh, granular uh, open source geospatial units that reflect physical boundaries and adhere to privacy constraints. So basically what we have, and this is in Denmark, we are from Aalborg University in Denmark. So basically what we have in Denmark at the moment is that we have municipalities which had very good data, um, and this is released and publicly available. Then we have grid cells, which are very uh, granular 100 by 100 meter areas, which also has data, but it's not publicly available. Um, and this is due to privacy constraints. And we basically want to go on the sub-municipal level to provide a more detailed data overview of Denmark on a range of economic indicators and quality of life indexes. So we need to do something to kind of map what we have in the grid cells uh, over to, the, uh, to all of Denmark. Um, so also just to, uh, just an overview of who is actually collaborating in this project. So it's, it's us, Alba University Re uh, Research Institution, and then we have Data Clinic, which is a pro bono data for good initiative uh, of the Two Sigma financial company. Then we have Statistics Denmark, which sits on all the data. And then we have data.org, which is funding um, the whole thing. Data.org is also a data for good initiative started by MasterCard and the Rockefeller Foundation. So these are kind of all the parties involved. And then the stakeholders, Danish municipalities, organizations, and um, yeah, different decision makers, and also researchers to some degree. That's us. <clears throat> so how do we actually do this? How do we arrive at something which is on the sub-municipal level, which are like mini phone polygons where we can put in some data and show some useful stuff to both municipalities and the general user? So our starting point is basically we have the open street map road networks here on the, on the left. This is an example municipality. And then uh, the process of polygonizing all of that we have uh, used existing and custom scripts packages in both R and Python that we have developed ourselves and put up. And then we basically end up with something like this to start with. And this is good. Um, we had some issues, obviously, with coasts, islands. Denmark is a complicated country geographically, so it's not so easy to work with. Um, but next, we need to kind of put them into these grid cells because that's where we have the data. So our next step is to make an overlay and here we have the grid overlay. And um, it also looks good, but the problem is that the privacy constraints of the data in Denmark requires that we have a minimum of 50 households uh, and 100 people. So we need to go through an additional clustering step. And this is basically what we do here on the right-hand side. And we, among other things, we use the MaxP regionalization algorithm and also some custom clustering scripts that we have developed in R. And Basically, in this case, it's, uh, it uh, adheres to the privacy constraints. Um, so our end goal is to actually have this web tool. This is a very, very early uh, prototype of what it will look like. It's set to release in 2023, hopefully to be used by municipalities. Lots of indicators about uh, you know, um, uh, household income, housing prices, distances to education, all these things that they might find very interesting. And this is going to go back 30 years in time. So we are now in the process of extending the data window from 1990 to, to, to 2020. And also from an academic perspective, we really want to do some spatial longitudinal analysis on this because it will be uh, much more detailed than what we have already. Um, and then, of course, integrate uh, feedback from key stakeholders. Um, and what we really like about this, this is like potentially has the, um, or has the potential for being applied in other countries or elsewhere where the OpenStreetMap is available because this is basically just a custom script that is able to create these neighborhood or areas which are very granular. Um, and also because at the moment in Denmark, we don't really have a standard of analysis for very small areas similar to, for example, the US census tract. So we really hope that what we're doing here can help develop um, this in the future for Denmark. So, yeah, if you are, you are more than welcome to also visit our uh, GitHub here where you have a little bit more documentation and you also uh, have links to the repos with the relevant stuff in both R and Python.
So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.